Good morning, students. Happy to see you. And yes, there is a reason why I'm doing this lecture in my bathroom this morning. Now, we've officially reached my very favorite lesson, legitimately probably the greatest lesson that I have ever written as a history teacher. So let us begin. Now, today, we are going to be talking what a lot of students always remember about my class. This concept known as seppuku. Now, seppuku, um, we'll talk about what that is specifically, but seppuku is a direct result of a couple other things. Number one, being honor, and number two, being the system of feudalism, which you learned about yesterday with Miss Cherchin. Now, today, our CHQ, why would honor, which, by the way, was very important in Japanese society, still is, lead samurai to commit seppuku, which here is your hint at what seppuku actually is. Now, this requires a little bit of explanation before we get into the practice of seppuku itself. Now, uh, go far back to the very beginning of our lesson. I'm sorry, the very beginning of our unit. We talked about this guy named Prince Shotoku. Now, Prince Shotoku, the first Japanese emperor, comes along and he writes a thing called a constitution. Now, his constitution was influenced by three massive religions in Japan. Number one, the religion known as Shinto. Now, the religion of Shinto, the belief in all these kamis, these spirits, coupled with the religions of Confucianism and Buddhism, allowed Prince Shitoku to write his constitution. Now, within his constitution, he has this line here. He says, rulers are the heavens and subjects are the earth. In other words, rulers are above, subjects are below. Now, as you saw yesterday with Miss Churchian, this is super important to the creation of Japanese social order known as feudalism. Now, feudalism, this is really important to remember, that in the system of feudalism, you have the emperor at the top. He's the most powerful. However, after the Kamakara shogunate comes along, actually the second group down here, the shogun, actually are the ones running the show. But in feudalism, you have the emperor at the top. You got Shogun right down here, these military warlords. Right below them, we have this group called the Daimyo. These are wealthy landowners. Right below them, my favorite of all group, called the Samurai. These are the actual Japanese warriors. And then at the very bottom, you got three different groups. Number one, you have artisans, people who make things. Number two, you have peasants, people who grow things. And number three, you have merchants, people who sell things. Now, merchants in Japanese medieval society are at the bottom of the barrel. The reason being is that they are the greedy ones. All they care about is money. And if you're a Buddhist, being greedy just doesn't line up. So after centuries of Buddhist and Confucius beliefs, a new concept comes into play. Now this happened in the 17th century. This is the term that we in our class is going to call Bushido. Now Bushido is a fancy term for the code of the samurai, a way in which the samurai were supposed to live. Now, how did Bushido relate to seppuku? Now, as we said earlier, honor was extremely important in Japanese feudalism. In fact, Bushido, the uh, term used to identify the samurai code of honor, was practiced by nearly every single samurai in one shape or another. Now. Let's get to seppuku. Seppuku, the practice, is known as ritual suicide. Now, if a samurai was dishonorable to his lord, either a daimyo, the emperor, or a shogun, they were required culturally to perform this process of seppuku. Now, Today, the question that we're going to be looking at, as stated earlier, is why would honor lead samurai to commit seppuku, which requires me to show you what seppuku actually looked like. So, what would happen is, let's say, that I was a samurai wearing my samurai robe, and I brought dishonor to my lord. Now, the samurai would sit down cross-legged like this, take some nice deep breaths in and out. Notice, many of you kids already know, what I'm doing is I am meditating, I am clearing my mind. Now, once I have reached peace, what I would do is I would reach out in front of me and I would grab 
my small samurai sword, which is called the wakazashi. Now I take this wakazashi, I would put it to one side of my stomach and take in a nice deep breath and I would stuff it into my stomach. Now, there's the interesting part. I'm completely 100% still alive at this moment. What I would do is I would take my wakazashi and I would slowly pull it from one side of my stomach to the other. Now, if you're really brave, take your finger and feel just how unbelievably painful this actually would be. Now, here's the wild part. I am 100% still alive through this entire process. I'm taking my sword, I'm cutting open my belly, and I am literally spilling my guts because I have brought dishonor to my Lord. Now, in Buddhist belief, your soul, in America, we think that our soul is in our hearts. In Buddhist belief, they believe that their soul, their soul is in their bellies. So literally and figuratively, what I'm doing is I'm slicing my belly open to spill my soul for my Lord. Now, this is gross. Plug your ears if you want. My stomach literally opens up like a Ziploc bag and my internal organs come spewing out of my stomach and into my lap. Now, here's the nasty part. I am still 100% alive while this happens. Now, in the meantime, I've picked my number one home dog to stand right about here. And as soon as that person sees that my guts have fallen into my lap, it is their job to put me out of my misery. They take their katana, they hold it over my head, and they <laughs> chop my head off, thereby finishing the process of seppuku. Now, I have a nice little video I'm gonna show you of this. Don't worry, it's not too gory, it's nothing too insane, um, but I think it does a really good job of showing us what this process actually looks like. Enjoy, kids. <laughs> Dips it into the water to cleanse the blade. Remember, this is very ceremonial. Seppuku. 
Now, kiddos, if that isn't the coolest lesson you've ever had, I don't know what is. Now, uh, what you guys are going to do now is you guys are going to look at a couple documents, look at what this actually looked like, answer those five questions, should be easy. And happy Friday, kiddos. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I miss you as always.